So you've had a lot of therapy. I've been to a number of therapists, yes, mm -hmm. I have. Uh -huh. And what has that experience been? I don't know if it's all been so positive. Um, it's been a real mixed bag, honestly. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess I've learned that like not all therapists are created equal. How many different therapists have you had? Um, I, I don't know, maybe around a dozen or so over yes. the years. So I thought where we'd start today, is your mind your friend? Um, I feel like I have a very restless mind and I'm constantly thinking. Um, I'll make the blanket statement very often of like, oh, I feel out of my mind, you know, without ever really thinking about what that specifically means of being out of my mind. Just knowing that in general, I do not view my relationship with mental health as a very positive one, you know? Mm -hmm. It's so interesting in uh, the arena of mental health, uh, it's not out there what it is to be mentally healthy. We know what it is to pathologize another, to make one crazy, to make one out of their mind. <laughs> so when you were younger as a child, I guess your mind was really, you, you didn't know what to think, huh? No, but I lived inside my head. Like yeah. I, I was really good at, um, like playing toys by myself and like making up stories, you know. Um, I just, I spent a lot of time inside my head thinking. Okay. The last time I saw a regular therapist, I was like in a really, really low place in life. And I had had a suicidal ner nervous breakdown. And since then, everything I've experienced has been rebuilding in a lot of ways. So when you had ideation about hurting yourself, how did you want to hurt yourself? I just wanted to not be here anymore. Okay. Um, and, and it wasn't like a specific uh, need to fulfill a pain. Cause I know that like I was, a, I was a cutter when I was like 13, 14 years old or whatever. And that was just about like feeling, feeling pain, feeling physical pain. And I, I, nothing about that seemed appealing to me four years ago. I more just wanted to like drink vodka and eat ambience until I died and just not wake up in the morning, you know? Mm -hmm. I understand. But I really did also find freedom just in like that point of living on the edge, you know, of mm. like being there, of like having seen how easy it would be of like, I could just end it. I think you've done some things that have been not easy. Like when you came out, that was not easy. Yeah. How is that? Is that okay? Um, I don't know, honestly. You know, like, I think about two years after coming out, like, I had a nervous breakdown because oh. it was then, like, I realized, like, oh, all this really happened, you know, and, and it all just kind of caught mm -hmm. up with me and living with blinders on mm -hmm. of, of, like, trying to just survive the madness of that, especially coming out in a really public way. Mm -hmm. That was just kind of like crushing to me in a lot of ways. You were, how old at that time? When I came out, I was 31. 31. So for 31 years, you've been holding that down, not disclosing. Mm -hmm. So I just have a hypothesis hunch, and you can correct me, is that early on in life, nobody really got you. I've, I've felt like I have, I've had a hard time connecting with people. Nobody really ever got you, and consequently, you sort of turned against yourself, unconsciously, that you sort of didn't know who you were anymore because people were trying to say, you're not this, you shouldn't do this, what are you, why are you doing that, da, 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 and then you also may have unconsciously interjected that. Completely. I mean, obviously, it's really easy to see, like, just how living with gender dysphoria from a young age would lead to having an experience like that where you don't feel like you're really got by anybody because you have this thing that only you know that you never, you just know that you can't talk about it with an adult because it would lead to consequences you don't want to deal with, you know? Okay. There's like a further nuance to it that like also had to do with um, like the collapse of, of my male ego even if it was just a survival mechanism of adopting ways of thinking, like I needed to destroy certain parts of them in order to move past them, you know? Of course. And like, you know, just recognizing male privilege, you know, like that, that I didn't see before. Wow. I was just thinking about you said easy. We were processing the word easy. Right. 
Isn't that comforting to know it may not be easy? <laughs> <laughs> it sure doesn't make it any easier. <laughs> You know, okay, I'm gonna have to really. <laughs> yeah, this is not easy. It complicated stuff, you know. It it made things change. I feel like that I'm pretty like disconnected from most of my okay. family, okay. you know. Um, some ways more unhealthily than not, you know. Some of it's like there's the physical distance, you know. Is it that you don't want to go back, or you're just not <clears throat> making time? It's more so uh, like. I travel for a living, and then when I have a break that I could be visiting with family, I don't want to travel, and I'm the one with a seven-year-old, so I want people to come to me. Yes. I know that's like selfish. I realize it as I'm saying it, but also it's like, yo, <laughs> like, okay. I have a seven-year-old. Please help me, you know? You want it easy. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I don't talk to my father anymore. Okay, talk about that. When I came out, that kind of ended all like dialogue between me and my dad. I kind of came to a place though where I was accepting of that and being like, I'm fine with that. Maybe I should be thankful for that. <laughs> that just made like something, I'm sorry to keep going back to the word easier, but maybe that just kind of made it easier in that like, okay, maybe this is hard for you and that you just need some space and like why I just try to force it and be together and then endure awkward moments and like, you know, have a bullshit relationship like that. Um, but I do feel very cut off from most of my family. Like I don't have much contact really at this point with people, you know? What feelings are around that? Um, both thinking that's a shame and also thinking like that, that seems like relationship, uh, like that it's kind of common, that it's not necessarily something that's like, just like exclusive to being trans or anything like that, that like family relationships are hard and, uh, that's like um, oftentimes people just kind of end up cut off from each mm -hmm. other, you know? So with all of the changes that you're so open to and have made, perhaps it will help your psyche as well as your emotional self to know everybody can't go there. But I've noticed those changes on the other side now have taken place to where like, oh, now their lives have moved on and my life has moved on. And like, how do you reconcile and bring that back to like common family bonds that don't look the way that like the cliche version of a family exists? The closest thing I did have to that was the house that I lived in from when I was like 13 years old until I moved out at 18. And my mother recently moved out of that and she met someone and moved in with him and like knowing, okay, she has like, she has a partner and she's like happy and she has a life and I'm very happy for her and that's awesome. And you know, and my little brother, he's like has a successful business and he got married this past December. And like, I'm disconnected in the way like, I haven't even met any of their partners. I haven't met my brother's wife. I had to miss the wedding because we were on tour in Europe. And that makes me feel shitty. It really does make me feel shitty. Okay. Does your daughter know her grandparents, etc.? Yeah, I mean like more of a relationship with her, her grandmother than her grandfather, you know? But Do you think yeah. that's something that would be... Uh... I, I mean, I want my daughter to have a relationship with her grandparents or with all, like, all her family, you I know? I see, I see. If you want a relationship with your family, it's going to be on you. Mm -hmm. And I hear that it may not be important to you right now in your psyche, as your daughter is, you're willing to sacrifice there. I'm not hearing that you're willing to sacrifice your family. Okay, but wait, what if it's that... But that's a two-way street. Right? Sometimes. So like, no, because if they want a relationship with me, shouldn't they have to sacrifice just as much as if I want a relationship with them and I, I don't think they, they are have to where sacrifice? you are. Okay. I, they, they aren't where you are. They don't understand. They, they're afraid and awe, unknown. They are paralyzed. Am I making any sense to you? Is that that really? does make sense. Yeah. I can accept that. So yeah. it's on you if you want a relationship and want to, mm -hmm. to come closer together, it's on you. That's fair. What does that do to you? Yeah, not easy. <laughs> <laughs> not easy. Um, I, I mean, I guess that most of all, out of anything, just like that phrase or like that thought of doesn't have to be, no one said it's gonna be easy.